In our passage at Youth Group this week, Jesus told a parable about two sons. The purpose of the parable was to emphasize the necessity of repentance for entering the kingdom. And seeing as repentance is such an important topic, I thought I would do a podcast explaining what repentance is. In biblical Hebrew, the idea of repentance is represented by two verbs. The first meaning to return, and the second meaning to feel sorrow. In the New Testament, the word translated as repentance is a word made up of two words, the first meaning after and the second meaning to think. Together, they mean to think differently after. So repentance is therefore primarily an afterthought, a change of mind and a change of conduct and a change of heart. It means a change of mind in response to the gospel of Jesus. Think of it this way. Imagine you really hate licorice, but then something happens and for some reason you really love licorice now. In the same way, we used to love sin and hate God, but now God changes our hearts so we hate sin and we love God. It means we take God's side against sin instead of taking sin's side against God. Well, that's what repentance is. What does fake repentance look like? Here are some illustrations. The four second, where is the exit strategy apology? Yes, well, sorry about that. The minimizing responsibility apology? Well, maybe I did that, but. The forced apology? I guess I'm supposed to say. The instrumental apology? Nothing's gonna work till I say this, so. And the, you're too oversensitive apology. I'm sorry you feel that way, but see how all of these tend to minimize or downplay or blame shift the sin towards someone else? So what does true repentance look like? Well, step one, acknowledging your sin against God. And as we gaze at the cross and what it costs Jesus, it becomes impossible to minimize our sin. Step two, take responsibility for your sin. Naturally, we make excuses for our sin to avoid taking responsibility. A repentant person won't try to minimize, downplay, or excuse what they've done. Step three, identify the underlying heart motivations that drive you to sin. Acknowledge that you've been seeking in other places what can only be found in God. Step four, receive God's forgiveness by faith. Remember the tax collectors and the prostitutes? who came to Jesus and were forgiven, well, God promises forgiveness to undeserving sinners like you and I. Step five, rely upon God's power to turn away from sin. A truly repentant person will realize they need God to change their heart. And so we need to pray desperately for God to give us new desires and new habits and genuine love for him and for others. So that's what repentance is. What might an example of repentance be? Well, there was a man who used to work on a ship as a slave trader. He mistreated slaves and sold them for profit. He was extremely rebellious. He was so offensive in his language that he became known among sailors as the great blasphemer. During a violent storm and after seeing a shipmate washed overboard, he asked himself, could there be any mercy for one as undeserving as myself? And as the ship was sinking, he considered many verses in the Bible which he began to see in the light of truth. And he was struck by the way in which Jesus came to grant light and life to those who were completely undeserving. When the badly damaged ship finally dropped anchor, a transformed man went safely ashore. He had got on the ship as a child of darkness, but left the ship as a repentant Christian. Having received the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which gave him a new heart. As a result, he went on to live a life marked by repentance of turning away from sin and turning towards Jesus. He stopped using God's name in vain. He stopped selling people as slaves. Instead, he started telling people the good news about Jesus and started trying to abolish the slave trade. It was his joy to follow Jesus. His name was John Newton. Yes. That is the John Newton who wrote the well-known Christian hymn, Amazing Grace. 
In Amazing Grace, he wrote, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. John Newton lived half of his life lost in darkness. But God gave him a new heart and enabled him to see how beautiful the cross was. This is the change that God can bring about when he gives someone a new heart and causes them to repent and turn back to him through faith in his son. Well, I hope this explanation of repentance was helpful. Stay tuned for further topicals to come. Thanks.